Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. As you can probably notice, we will go into an eyeshadow tutorial and today's featured product is the Colored Rain Smoke Show Palette from their mini palette series. This is my third video, first one being using the Beauty Rust, second the Lovelies. Now we're going into Smoke Show. If you haven't already, please subscribe so you can see the rest of my tutorials, demos, or reviews. Also, if you like these types of videos, give this one a thumbs up. Let me know what else you would like to see on my channel. I am definitely working on a 2017 favorites list to film and other good stuff for makeup and hair. So without further ado, let's get into this video. As you already see, I have my base on, cooking underneath. This powder has been on for a very long time. Let's just say my under eyes are going to be very bright. Eyebrows are on, lids are prepped. I will set them with some powders so it's not as tacky. And let's get into these eyes. I do have the Laura Mercier powder on because I've been using Patrick's powder and usually when trying out new products, I go back to the ones that I was using before just to kind of get a better handle of my experience. Like, do I really love it? Or I just forgot what the OG was like. And I really love Patrick's powder, definitely. It's finely milled. I just I just like to rotate my my stuff, you know what I mean? Just gonna pat, 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 pat some powder on these lids. I like these Christmas nails, eh? They're nice and foily. Moving into now the Smoke Show. I've used this palette before. It's tons of fun. Trying to, I think I am definitely will use these colors for my lid and work with these for my crease. And with that, I'll first go in with Cloudy just to set my brow bone area. Believe it or not, I'm gonna save Naked Eye to blend out Torch and Flammable. And with that, I'll first go in with Flammable. Taking my Smith 232, it's a newer one I purchased from their Black Friday sale. It's slightly bigger than my original 232. I don't have it with me on hand, but the it's just a slightly bigger head on this, which is fine. Really great for blending out. But for my first crease shade, I'm gonna go in with this burnt orange color. I want to start pulling it out now, just a tiny bit, not too much, beginning to shape the outer V. Now with a Smith 235, it's more tapered and flat with the shade Torch. This will give us a more precise application of the deeper shade. And I'm bringing it in right under my crease line. It's blowing up a tiny bit, but not so is getting up close to my brow bone area. I'm just keeping it here because when applying the matte green shade, it's going to act as a nice diffusing depth effect, if you will. And I'm giving myself bedroom eyes just so I can see how the shadow applies. And if I need to blend out any edges, I could see what those edges are. And I really like the point of this brush. It allows me to get to where I need without the shadow spreading too high. Excellent. I think now with a flatter brush, I could find it. I lied. I'm taking a smaller blending brush. This is now the Smith 230. Much like the 232, except because of its smaller head, it's going to give us a precise, a more precise application. And with that, we go in with Showtime. Now, in combination with Torch, more on the lid. I'm gonna start blending that in. Still keeping it under flammable, the burnt orange shade. Now taking it up, but because we applied Torch first, the green has now something to transition into. And it won't be a super harsh application. And using the smaller brush gives me more control. And if I want more pigmentation, then I'll simply apply more shadow. But working little by little, 
so it doesn't get out of hand. And I slowly start to pull it out to match up with flammable. This green is really nice. And even though it looks green in the pan, I guess because since it's mixing with the brown, it's taking on a deeper hue. But on camera, it looks like a true matte forest green. And pretty impressive that I'm not packing this on with the shader brush. I'm simply using a blending one. And the saturation is still impressive. Again, anytime you're dealing with the outer edge of your eye, very light pressure, almost barely there. Because the bristles will work for you. You don't have to apply any extra pressure just to help blend out these edges. Because you see how that's a little, it skipped a little bit. And that's why, again, with light pressure, I'm working to smooth those skips out. We'll get back to that. This is, this is the bad eye. It's already giving me problems. Back with our original 232, now with Naked Eye, this more peachy beige shade we will now blend out the edges of the terracotta shade. Because I didn't want to use terracotta too high. I wanted it to be where it is now. But to blend this out further, this peachy matte shade will do the trick. And I'm trying to, you know, fix this. But probably what will happen when doing the lower lash line and connecting those colors, I'll be able to further smooth out those skips. I'm not going to worry about it too much now because we will now go in with smoke screen. This shade right here is gorgeous. Putting it all over the lid. And the reason why I applied the matte green shade first was so this shade had something to hold itself against. It will turn up green, saturated in that deep color that you see it appear in the pan. We want it the same way on our lids. Hitting it with some setting spray. This is Zimorphi Setting Spray. Zoeva 234. Patting carefully over the lid. Isn't this, I love this shade. It's the only uh, foil metallic shade in this palette but it's it's good i mean it doesn't need any other metallic friends and again lifting my lid just so i can see the edges and if they need any blending which they always do but i want to make sure i'm getting the shape right and that it doesn't go too high up i'm taking my smaller smith 230 Carefully blending out the edges. Very light pressure. Again, lifting my lid so I can see what I'm doing. I want to put a touch more flammable right here. Just going to help blend that out. Then with my bigger brush. Better, better. We're getting there, we're getting there. I think it's safe for us to wipe off this bake, which is gonna be, oh my gosh, so intense. Because I really wanna fix this portion right here. But until I complete my lower lash line, I don't wanna continue that project. First with a Morphe Y18 and with the burnt shade, terracotta shade. Taking that first. Then just at the edge on one side, the dark, the dark brown shade to the outer and inner corners of my lash line. Pinching it a bit and just taking it right here. I could use a pencil brush, but I'm just deciding to be difficult about it. Now this is a Morphe Y22, any pencil brush will do, in with our matte green shade in Showtime. This is where I will now complete any, fill in any holds. Taking my time and the smaller brush 
is appropriate for this detail work because anything bigger I think will take it out too far and then we'll have a little bit of a disaster on our hands. And anytime dealing with the outer corner, you always want to blend in. And when that's done and good to go, you could blend out with your fluffier brush. I think I want to take Showtime here as well. Yeah, I want to do that. I love grungy, smoky eyes. I typically don't like them to be super neat in that kind of cut crease sort of way. I want my lower lash line to be very smoky, almost to the point of messy, just a touch. I like how it looks on my eyes. It's not for everyone. And if you feel this is too much or will be too much for your lower lash line, you can at least just stop here with the green shade or maybe you just use the deep brown shade, taking torch right between. But I feel that this suits the look just for what I'm doing today. You can definitely stop at any point if you feel this will be far too Rikunai-ish for you. Back in with the Y18 and Flammable, I'm going to further smoke out all the deeper shades. Now that we have a little bit of a mess, it's cool, naked eye. This is where we start to refine it a little bit. I'm taking the bigger fluffy brush, blending brush I should say, and I'm cleaning up the edges. And again, with a very, very light touch, anytime you're dealing with the outside of the eye look, all the way, I'm holding it close to the base so it yields the least amount of pressure. And that's when you start to refine the edges. If you feel you have too much product, I'm rubbing it on a towel. You can use a color switch tin, whatever is on hand. I think that's great. A uh, final fingertip application with Smoke Show just to the center of the lid. And of course, I went too far up. Mm. Taking my Velour Lash Set that I purchased from Holuk. They have two styles, less intense, more intense. I'm gonna work with the more, the less intense ones, excuse me, in, oops, naughty me. I prepared my lashes because I had to cut them a tiny bit. Glue is on, setting, ready to get tacky. While we wait, why don't we apply some bronzer using my LC bronzer in tan. I'm very excited because along with our eyeshadow tutorial, I also have the new Physicians Formula Butter Highlighters. I have three, uh, quickly going over their 5 grams each, retail for $10.99 each, and they are not in your or the typical design that the butter bronzer and butter blush come in now in a twist off compact design which i prefer i like yes this can get lost but i haven't had any bad luck with other ones that are designed like this i have the shades champagne rose gold and pearl what shall we use put on my lashes i feel like it get a little bit tackier let's just wait a little bit let's try champagne it's a cream to powder formula super smooth in the pan look at this Pan, that's gorgeous. I already swatched some on the back of my hand earlier. That's a nice, it's a really nice shade. Again, this is champagne. Sorry if it's not focusing on my hand right now. There we go. Let's see how it applies with a brush first. Do one side, I'm curious, and then we'll apply Z lashes oh okay i might have to go in with rose gold on camera it looks lovely in real life i'm not really crazy about how it's blending out so i'm going to punch it in just to help it buff out a tiny bit that's better to see how it looks with fingers 
Ooh, fingers might be your best bet, friends, just because of the texture of the product. It is cream to powder. Perhaps that will yield better results. Oh, and I'm messing up my eye. <laughs> relax, you gotta relax. I definitely could have left them to dry a little more, but I was getting anxious. House of Lash Glue is like cement. Duo takes a way longer time, but with House of Lash Glue, that stuff stays. And to clean it out of your lashes, it's actually really tough. You'll still have glue in your lashes days after you take off the falsies. It's kind of insane. But you don't have to worry about your lashes coming out throughout the night, so that's a good thing. Wait for them to dry completely and apply mascara to my lashes so they don't look weird and gray. To finish off, let's do the other side with rose gold. I think rose gold is a better shade for my skin tone. I'm gonna take it with my finger. That definitely looks more low key. Let's see how it applies with the brush. I like that. I think maybe champagne actually looks better. It's really hard to tell. I'm just applying champagne to the highest point of my cheekbone here. I'm gonna just put it right to the center. It definitely still has that traditional butter bronzer physician's formula scent. Very tropical in nature. I like it, but it's not my go-to fragrance for sure. I gotta play with it more, friends. Right now, I love how it looks on camera. I've been really picky with highlighters lately because although the beauty blogger trend is to have a blinding highlight, I actually don't like my highlights to be blinding because in real life, it doesn't look great on my skin texture. And I, I buff them out a lot. I make sure they melt into my skin and they don't just sit. I'm combining both rose gold and champagne to see what we can make happen here. They remind me of the Super Shock texture from ColourPop. Very much like that, how it feels in the pan. Accidentally sabotaged my blending here. From far, it looks okay. I'm just gonna keep it like that. With a little bit of finagling, I think the butter highlight looks nice. I'm not saying great because of the work I had to do to get it to look how I want it to look. Perhaps maybe I have to use another brush. The Anastasia brush is a little stiff and I think it picks up too much product, way too much for this consistency. Perhaps something fluffier that's not going to lay down as much texture on my skin. I'm going to pop on old school cargo. Remember how cargo used to be in Sephora and now it's in Dwayne Reed or whatever drugstore it's in where you live? It's kind of insane. This is in the color Laguna, which is like a very fun favorite of a lot of people because it's a beautiful like hot coral shade taking this with the morphe m509 very big and fluffy and it won't lay down as much product just to color and as i like to do just give a nice buff to finish, I will apply now mascara, top and bottom. <gasps> Why? Why? I'm gonna wait for that little nick to dry. So fragile. We could at least pop in the butter highlighter to our inner corner. At least. That works. I was thinking a nude lip, but a glossy one. And with that, I chose to apply ColourPop's Ultra Glossy Lip in Lazy. And that's the finished look, friends. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this tutorial helped. If you have Smoke Show and were wondering how to use the shades. And it's funny, this now looks more like a midnight blue. I went into the bathroom just to fix my lashes and I saw the shade on my lid and it actually turns out a little more 
midnight blue and it's strange because maybe it, since it's next to this green shade it looks more it will be a metallic foil green but it actually is more like a a blue like a grayish blue and i really love this shade and the whole color story of this palette i'm a fan and i found that these mattes were not quite as kickbacky as her other palettes i thought lovelies will had a lot of kickback especially in the blue shade and the gray shade i forgot which ones were really giving me a lot of dust. For the most part though, I expect her palettes to have a lot of kickback, but I found that, again, this one didn't have as much. This transition color is gorgeous. I would find myself using this a lot, if not using the rest of the shades, just this one here. And again, Smokescreen may be appropriately named because it is like more of a smoky type of blue shade than it is a green, which I originally thought it was gonna be when I saw it on the computer screen. I think the green shade sets up Smokescreen in a lovely way. And how the colors blended together, nothing looks out of place, everything just looks really nice and gradient. I'm a fan of this palette again. If you haven't, let me know. The last one we'll have to do is the Very Cute, where you have a lot of the purples, pinks, and uh, whatever other shades are in there. I'll try to get that as soon as possible. I'm still working with the Butter Highlighter. I love the glow effect is giving me because in person, my skin doesn't look super textured, which I was worried about on the first application. But I think if I were to apply it with my fingers, it will, it will look more smooth and not as grainy. And again, it reminds me a lot of the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. They're actually packaged in uh, the same way. These are bigger. Again, they're 5 grams. ColourPop's Super Shock Highlighters, I think retail either, either for 7 or $8, and this is for 11 I don't think you get as much product in the Super Shock Shadows as you excuse me, highlighters as you do with this, but I will put all that info down below if you feel the need to compare prices and sizes. And Midwest Makeup Junkie had mentioned that she had purchased the Cheers 2 Beauty Palette. I'm trying to be very consistent in using your names anytime I'm referring to a comment because I, I want this to be a conversation and discussion because I know we all love to talk about makeup and I think it'll be more fun in that way. Midwest Makeup Junkie had mentioned she ordered Cheers to Beauty and one of the shadows, a glittery silver arrived shatter, shattered. And I was on the fence about buying Cheers to Beauty and I stopped myself because I, I just got all the mini palettes and I've been really loving them. And you know, Queen of Hearts, it's like, Definitely my top five palettes from, did it come out in 2017 or 2016? I don't remember. And for the most part, I appreciate that color story arrangement more than Cheers to Beauty, even though they look like they have a lot of matte shades that you can use. And I wanted to buy that one instead of, oh my God, because I had mentioned to face chocolate bar in my anti-haul that I did I think like two months ago like way before it even arrived on Instagram and I swatched it in stores and that gold shade is oh my god it has like little specks of crushed diamond something because the glitz and sparkle of it is not your traditional shimmer metallic shadow it has a little more shine and glow to the shadow and i was stunned and i swatched all the shades and they had really a nice smooth consistency really applied well i mean the to the back of my head i'm not sure how they perform on the lid let me know if you guys pick that up and back to my original point i wanted to shop small business local and get Cheers to Beauty because I felt that was similar in nature to the Chocolate Gold Bar. And then Urban Decay's Heavy Metals palette went on sale because it didn't do too well, simply because I think the design is a little clunky, hard to store, hard to utilize. Definitely more of a decorative palette just because of the purple metallic sleeve it comes in and the palette itself has the pans on the side and the mirror at the center. 
it's it, it looks like an artist palette which probably was the whole purpose of its design and i tried to swatch those shadows next to the gold bar shadows to see if they could compare and i thought that the gold bar shadows had a little more glitz to them than the heavy metals and i was like maybe you should just get the heavy metals because the heavy metals has both the colorful and neutral metallic shades from Colored Rain's Cheers to Beauty and Too Faced's Chocolate Gold Bar. I didn't buy anything, I just left Sephora. I was like, get your makeup remover and go. Because again, I'm trying to hanker down on what I'm buying and really evaluating if I need something or not. And I never need anything. Let's just, let's just be very honest. It's more so I wanna try everything uh, and just get creative with all this new makeup coming out. But again, it's getting very expensive and I'm trying to reason and see what I have in my collection that will match up with what's coming out now on the shelf. Let me know if you got Chocolate Gold Bar. Let me know if you have Urban Decay Heavy Metals. And in addition to Midwest Makeup Junkies purchase, if any of you uh, have bought the Colored Rain Cheers to Beauty palette. And we'll leave it at that and see how it goes. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another review, tutorial, demo, or chit chat. Thank you, take care, and happy holidays!